I'm pleased to present the administration's eighth budget for consideration by the Common Council. The 2024 spending plan represents the administration's dedication to protecting the taxpayers' investment in their government by presenting a solid financial plan that includes improving public safety with necessary personnel and equipment, continuing to, to invest in infrastructure improvements, providing the equipment and resources required by our many departments, which enables the employees to deliver constituent services at a very high level, and ensures the city will remain on its progressive path in the area of economic development. Some of this message may sound like a repeat of the 2023 budget message, but many of the economic warning signs that were present last year are still impacting our ability to forecast 2024 income and expenses. Inflation, currently hovering around 3.2%, is down from its peak of 9.1%. However, inflation is factored into increased expenses on almost every major initiative or purchase for most of this calendar year, making budget forecasting difficult. Our four collective bargaining agreements all expired at the end of 2022, so our first order of business in 2023 was to return to the negotiating table with our union representatives. New York State's constant increase of the minimum wage is now affecting all wage scales from top to bottom and made our job more difficult in right-sizing salaries across the board. As an example, there is no longer a seasonal wage. This requires the city to pay even seasonal and temporary employees a minimum of $15 per hour just to remain competitive in the workplace in attracting employees. The minimum wage, along with increased prices in the marketplace, is straining all Americans to make ends meet and decreasing the value of their take-home pay. Therefore, it was time to revisit existing wage scales in comparison to surrounding communities of a like size throughout the state, as this had not been done in almost 20 years. It was apparent that our city was lagging behind in wage growth, affecting our ability to attract and maintain our great workforce, including our police and fire department personnel. Management and labor worked very hard to achieve new collective bargaining agreements that were fair and equitable. And as a result, the city was able to reach settlements satisfactory to each labor union, addressing base salaries, step increases, and future percentage increases. After right-sizing wage scales, all four collective bargaining units will average 3.5% wage increases for the next three years, with CSEA settling at 2% increases for years four and five. This investment in our employees acknowledges their importance to the strength and soundness of delivering excellent public services to the community and keeps the city's workforce competitive across national, state, and regional wages. With the increased economic activity in our community and the amount of public and private investment projects going on all around us, it is necessary to review our department personnel structures and make adjustments where required. However, due to the strain of inflation, we are recommending only minimal additions to our workforce in 2024. We are defunding one confidential secretary in the Corporation Counsel's Office and removing an unfilled position of Community Economic Development Specialist in the Community and Economic Development Office. Due to workload requirements, we are adding an Assistant Building Inspector in the Codes Office as we are nearing a record 600 open building permits. Continuing recruitment for an Engineer 1 in the Engineer's Office due to the multitude of public works projects we have underway adding a signal electrician to help with an increasing workload in the electrical department, beginning recruitment of a planning aid in the community and economic development department to assist with the dozens of projects on the docket, and upgrading a position in public works from senior account clerk to administrative aid. We are also actively recruiting for motor equipment operators, MEOs, to replace four laborer positions and increased drivers at DPW, especially during snow removal season. FICA, Medicare expenses, see a significant rise in this budget due to the increased salaries and wages. 
Insurance costs are up due to general market increases in liability and property casualty insurance and our inability to secure a self-insured retention policy. We absorbed the bulk of these charges last year and continue to phase this out. Even with all the DRI and ARPA funded projects underway, we will see a decline of over $300,000 in contract services. Included in this decrease is $90,400 less in community and economic development and a $4,000 decline in parking operations resulting from the demolition of the James Street parking garage and creation of a surface parking lot. We planned well for purchasing, fuel purchasing, and actually will realize a decrease with reimbursement from the refuse, refuse fund. However, with fuel costs on the rise again, we are planning accordingly for the 2024 budget year. We continue to see positive results from our telemedicine program, as well as our health and wellness initiatives related to the employee and retiree health insurance plans. Despite many insurers seeking double digit rate increases, we are only anticipating a 6.6% .6 rate increase or $445,000, $445,696 across all funds and our health insurance costs. Additionally, the New York State Comptroller recently announced a rate increase for the New York State and local retirement system around $300,000 but these costs will be partially offset by a decline in workers' comp of approximately $400,000. Sales tax revenue continues to be strong, trending at almost 7% increase this year. We anticipate a strong 2024 with estimated sales tax revenues growing at 5.5% or approximately $840,000. Debt service is always a major consideration when forecasting the annual budget. Despite the increased cost of money, i.e. rising interest rates to secure long-term financing, we will still fund a robust capital improvement program, but only after carefully scrutinizing almost $17 million in requested equipment purchases. The administration has determined a more manageable number is a capital spending program of approximately $9.7 million, with a total reduction of $7.2 million of requested equipment by department heads. Similarly, the total spending requested by department heads for the proposed 2024 budget was $39,522,000. After review by my office and the budget administrative team, we settled on $38,504,447. We reduced the total spending request by almost a million dollars. However, the RPD budget will actually rise by approximately $138,000, with the bulk of this increase being anticipated overtime expense. As previously mentioned, our contracts were reworked to more accurately reflect market conditions, and this was particularly true in the police department. This administration will not compromise public safety expense under any circumstance. Our city is known to be one of the safest cities in New York State, and it is incumbent upon us to provide the resources and financial support so they may perform at their highest and best level each and every day to protect our citizens. The enterprise funds, water, sewer, and refuse are performing at a very strong pace and are expected to increase with the major infrastructure improvements underway at this time. Therefore, there are no increases in the water, sewer, or refuse rates proposed for 2024. Overall, the city's financial condition is strong, which has been a hallmark of our administration. I am happy to report that for the seventh straight year, there will be no property tax increase for our residents. Although we are committing a little over $2.5 million of fund balance to be appropriated to help balance this budget, we have been planning for the onset of inflation with higher than expected expenses for quite some time by building our fund balance during our two terms in office and it will remain very healthy at just over $17 million. We are thankful that we can reappropriate those funds back to the taxpayers who are already facing increased costs of gasoline and groceries. Our city is poised to continue welcoming new residents and new businesses, and my wish is always for the city of Rome to be an economic leader in our region. God bless our wonderful city and our great citizens.